Clarity can exist only when there is freedom to observe, right? When one is capable of looking, observing, watching, that is only possible when there is complete, total freedom. Otherwise there is always distortion in our observation. I think that is fairly simple simple in words, but in action becomes terribly difficult. So, is it possible to be free of all the distorting factors in our outlook? When you observe yourself or another, society, the politicians, the environment, the whole cultural, religious movement that's going on in the world, so-called religious movement, can you observe without any prejudice, without taking any sides, without projecting your own personal conclusions, your beliefs, your dogmas, your experience and knowledge, and therefore be totally free of all that, to observe clearly. That's one problem. Second problem. The third problem is compassion. The word is not the thing. Uh, One may describe what is compassion in a most eloquent poetic manner, but whatever is expressed in words is not the thing. So we are going to find out these three things. What is compassion? Because without compassion there is no clarity. Without clarity there is no skill. They are totally interrelated with each other. So we're going to investigate these three problems. Whether human beings, as we are now, can have this extraordinary sense of compassion in our daily life, not a theory, not an ideal, not something to be achieved, to be practiced and all the rest of it, to have it totally, completely at the very root of our being? That's one question. Then from that arises, can there be clarity? Because one can be very clear in our thinking, objectively, rationally, sanely. But reason, however logical, however objective, is very limited. Obviously, right? I hope we are travelling together, moving together. And clear thinking has not solved our problems. The philosophers, the scientists, the so called religious people have thought very clearly about certain things, but in our daily life, Clear thinking has not resolved our issues, right? I'm, one may think very clearly why one is <coughs> envious or violent, <coughs> but the ending of violence is not, cannot be brought about through clear thinking. Clear thinking implies a limitation, because thought itself is limited. Thought itself is conditioned. Thought itself is, has its own boundaries. And thought may try to go beyond its boundaries and invent a logos, a deity, a, 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 a utopian state and so on. But it is still limited, because thought is the movement of memory 
which is experience, knowledge, and that is always from the past. Therefore, thought is time bound. Am I? Can I go on with all this? You are following somewhat. Please, I am not preaching. I am not doing any propaganda. We are not trying to convince you of anything. And I, we really mean that. At least I mean it. Absolutely, no sense of authority, no sense of trying to persuade you to think in a particular direction. Doing any kind of propaganda, doing to trying to convince you of something, or trying to make you join something. Nothing. So. Is it possible to think, to, to see the limitations of thought and give it its right place, and therefore giving right place to thought brings about clarity? Right? I, we mean right place. The art of that intelligence which, which comes through investigation, through exploration, that art, which is the very meaning of that word, is to put everything where it belongs, put everything in our life where it belongs. And to find out where it belongs, you need tremendous intelligence. And that intelligence can only come about when there is compassion, not direction by will, not following a certain pattern of of thought, but in the process of the in, of investigating what is compassion, in that movement or out of that movement comes an intelligence which is not personal or individual, it is intelligence. That's what we're going to find out. Right? How to, is it possible to awaken that intelligence which will bring about order in our daily life, and therefore socially, politically, in every direction, because we are the centre of society. Right? We are the. We make what society is. So we are, essentially, the product of the past. And whatever we do is limited by the past, by time, and any revolution, whether physical or psychological, brought about by thought, is limited. 